Hey everyone, as promised, here is a full, uh, high resolution, much better um, lighting and everything, full review of Fansoy's FT21 Sheridan, their version of a uh, Masterpiece Warpath. Um, wanted to thank everyone for who joined the live stream, but let's get right into it right away. So, packaging review, not much going on, really nice embossed uh, artwork, like the artwork a lot, alt mode on top, and then all the details on the back. You can see up here, it talks uh, about Warpath or Sheridan and his background, all this stuff like that. Really nice um, imagery with his um, alt mode on this kind of um, display or something like this with all this rubble. So it looks really good. Out of the packaging, um, he comes with a set of instructions and a plastic stack card. Same kind of bio and stuff like that that we saw on the back just now. His instructions um, are are pretty precise. There are a couple steps that they are, I think are a little bit weird and some steps, some small steps that they completely skip. And I'm gonna give you some advice um, on how to transform it that's a little bit different or out of order than what they say, just to um, potentially protect your figure from any kind of breakages. If you guys saw my live stream, I talked about, uh, there had been multiple reports of uh, knee issues, um, specifically a pin in either knee. And uh, this is a result. Basically, a small pin connects these two, and it's only a very small, like uh, three, three, maybe three or four millimeter pin that holds them in. Um, and if you don't transform it correctly, or maybe force it a little too much, it could easily come out. So uh, just be careful with that. Fans Toys did say that they are going to um, send out replacement parts, like either another pin or a screw. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work out. Uh, here he is out of packaging. He is mostly transformed in robot mode. Uh, the only thing you need to do right now is to extend the arms. You just pull down on that, it's on a sliding mechanism. And there we have Sheridan in his official robot mode. He only comes with one accessory, his little uh, alien mask from uh, that, that episode where uh, they dress as extras in that alien movie. All you do is go ahead and stick that on. It's just held on by friction and it recreates that scene pretty well. You just have to put his arms out and then get the awkward looking steps like that and you're pretty good to go. Um, I feel like it's a kind of a useless accessory but Warpath didn't get so much screen time that he had iconic accessories as, as far as I can tell. It would have been nice um, somebody mentioned in the live stream if you could make use of some blast effects. Um, people have really been enjoying that with the main line. So maybe that's something that we should see more of. Some more blast effects. Even the MP line has been doing like uh, smoke effects with with um, with a blue streak. Their newest one. Or smoke screen. Um, so that'd be really cool if they started doing that. And they've been known to do that before. So it'd be nice if they had included that. But for $100, right now the box he feels are very nice, very hefty, a lot of die cast in this guy, and um, and uh, overall a very solid figure. Let's do a quick 360 as usual. Let me put him off to the side so you can see a side-by-side com side comparison with his animation model. And you can see he's pretty loyal. I think the, the proportions are really well done. I often thought of Warpath as being a little bit more bulky than this. Um, but honestly, based on what you see in the cartoon and the animation model, this is pretty spot on. Before we go into any kind of um, articulation or transformation, I wanted to do some quick comparisons. I will do this one again, even though I did this on the live stream, just because this is the one that I think most people have uh, in mind when they want to see some comparisons. I also throw some photos on Facebook a while ago. And you can see just how chunky War, War, uh, War Dog is, Bad, Bad Cube's War Dog is. But some people really seem to enjoy this bulkier look um, as a tank. Um, people really like that he's a little heavily armored. Um, I do think he's not as clean anymore. And having gone through his transformation a couple times recently for this review, um, this guy's transformation overall is way less complicated. And the results speak for themselves, I think. All right. Um, the only other duplicate comparison I'll do is with MP44, just because he is the standard or at least a new standard now for MP line. And I didn't see any people commenting on any other specific uh, comparisons they wanted, so I thought I'd bring out a couple different ones. Here he is with Prowl, so you can see him with the Carbot. 
Here he is with Bad Cube's Brawny, another mini bot. Ocular Max's Cliff Jumper. Um, and then one other fans toys, recent fans toys figure that I, I enjoyed. Um, and this is their Jabber. So I guess I should put them in line to make, give you guys a better sense of how they actually scale. But yeah, I think he, he scales quite well. His robot mode, um, I think is really, really nice. Uh, that's how I'll display him. I imagine that's how most of you will display yours. Um, but his alt mode's really nice too. The only thing you'll notice is that it's actually very, very tiny in terms of uh, the size. He gets really compact. So no kind of mass shifting magic that we saw with their spoiler, um, but still a very, very nice transformation. So ar articulation wise, his head is on a ball joint. Does bobble around. He does have a really nice set of blue eyes, as you can see here. Zooming back out, he has um, shoulder articulation. So he has shoulder articulation in a number of different places. Um, he does have a hidden set of joints here. Bring these out, you can see a double set of joints. Uh, you can see you can bring these out. The real benefit of this compared to this is that then you can actually get the arm up. Uh, this way you get basically get no lateral. Uh, just be careful, this part is um, a little bit uh, softer plastic and it's held in just with one screw. Uh, so definitely hold this in place if you want to pull this out because it's very tightly, tightly um, uh, toleranced. And so you can do this to rotate around. And again, because of the way this part um, of the shoulder is attached and this tab here, uh, to get it all the way up, you do need to make use of that that joint, like so. This joint itself really is for transformation, but if you want to bring the shoulders up, instead of having it kind of low on the tank body, uh, this can make make it look a, a little bit different. I do think it makes it look like it look like his arms are a little bit stubbier, so I actually like to keep it all the way back and down as much as possible. He does have a bicep swivel. Mine has been loosening up over time, which is great. He does have a little bit better than 90 degree elbow bend, and then he has masterpiece style hands, which are very, very tight on this mushroom peg, um, at least on mine. And his hands only have four molded fingers together. He has kind of like a trigger pose, which is kind of funny because he doesn't have a gun. Um, so don't know why they needed to do that, but they just did. I'm sure they just duplicated it from another mold. Coming to his mid body, he has a nice waist swivel. Uh, no ratchets on this guy anywhere, just to let you guys know. At least um, I don't believe there's any ratchets anywhere. He does have a very, at least on mine, very, very tight ab crunch, which was hard to even find. Luckily, I did find it. He can go pretty far, though, as you can see, almost 90 degrees. But it's very, very tight. He has hip skirts off to the side and one big one out to the front. I usually don't like a single hip skirts going to the front, but I think this looks fine. Tightly tolerance legs going forward, going backwards, and out to the side. No drooping, even with a lot of shaking. You can see it holds up very tight, uh, unlike some of the tolerances we've seen in the past. Nice thigh swivel does have a knee bend, exactly 90 degrees. Um, some people, including myself, have reported that this knee, the right knee in particular, seems to run into a lot of um, um, uh, interference here. Uh, some people have said they fixed it by disassembling it and making some changes. I haven't looked into it yet, um, but it does work eventually. It's just um, a little bit scarier than you might like. And again, I don't know if that's a mass problem, but at least two people have told that to me. So, it's not a one-off. Uh, his feet, he does have ankle tilts that go in, ankle rocker. And his toe can go up a little bit and down a little bit. It can actually go down a lot more. He has an extending, extended joint here that's for transformation. But if you need it for some kind of weird posing that you want, uh, feel free. He doesn't have any separate toe or heel articulation really, but part of the transformation is this is this odd joint that can make him rotate like this. I can see 
this might be useful for some um, poses where you want, want to get his toe up like this. So go ahead and feel free to use it like that. Uh, and on the back, a QC sticker. Mine is number 30. Apparently they actually do have different numbers. All right, so that's really it for trans uh, for articulation. Nothing crazy going on, uh, but a lot of good articulation. It makes this guy uh, pretty dynamic. Like I said, with a combination of ab crunch, uh, the ankle tilts, he get in the stability that he has of the die cast all throughout. Uh, he makes makes for a very poseable, fun, uh, dynamic figure. Oops, sorry about that. Fun figure overall. Uh, uh, please ignore my awkward posing but he can get out pretty wide in the stance. He does so yeah, confirming he is exactly 10.5 ounces. Um, throw in the mask, and it makes no difference. Oh, no, 0.6. So, so you get 10.6 ounces of goodness with this figure and his accessories. All right, so let's go ahead and get into transformation. Uh, like I said, the transformation does have a couple of bits that are left out of the manual and I'm going to go in a different order, uh, mainly because of the, the knee issue. Um, I want to keep the knees or legs as solid as possible until the last moment. Uh, the instructions tell you to do the legs first and partially transform it and the knees kind of bent out, flopping out. Don't want to do that. So I would recommend doing the upper body first. So to, to that point, Let's start with the arms just because they're easy. As we saw before, just open up this, pull this down, and collapse them in. I do recommend extending the shoulder joints for transformation. Um, I'll explain why, but basically, uh, because of this tab, it gets hard to move stuff around. So when you do that, again, hold this inner part and extend it out. Open up the tab, flip this up, and then close this down. Uh, they do say that once you close it up, what you're going to want to do is push this back like so on both sides to get it in the, in the correct alignment. There we go. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and deal with the uh, backpack. The backpack is secured just with a little bit of friction here. They don't, they don't stay snugly tabbed in for me, but they're good enough for sure. Do that, come up to the back here, open up this little flap, and then we're going to deal with the upper body. So the upper body is secured um, with two pegs here and two pegs here. You kind of want to lift up and then out to get the upper body like this or the outside of the torso like that. Same thing on this side, lift up and then out, okay? Be very careful and mindful of that process. These sections here, you want to extend them and then just lift up that entire section that comes out. Since we're already here, let's go ahead and transform this. Uh, you're going to want to collapse these inwards like this. So make use of these, of these double hinges come in like this, the two halves. This piece, you're going to rotate all the way back on the screw and then come like so. And you'll see there's a little rounded cutout here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is collapse the shoulders inwards so that they reside just like that in, that in that recess. So once again, bring this around all the way to the back and then collapse this inward. Getting into that recess. Oh, come on. There we go. And these tabs should kind of go into these uh, big square holes. And there we go. The other thing we want to do on the backpack is make sure that this is flipped up, not closed back the way it was. All right, next, we're going to lift up on the upper body. It's tabbed in here. And we're going to pull this section out like that. We're going to rotate both parts 90 degrees and then rotate this part 90 degrees again. Uh, we need to make some space here so you can't keep it like this. Go like this, get this leveled out, and then now you can see that there's enough room, just enough room for this silver piece to come up and through, like that. All right, so over here, now we're gonna rotate this around. Again, rotate this 
to the front so it's all straightened out. For the head, rotate on this entire platform. There's a platform right below the, the, uh, the neck, not just the head. Rotate that all around, so you can see there, and then fold that in. The head will end up becoming the hatch. In this front section here, pull this down. And then there's another flap here that's really hard to get to. Um, if you have fingernails, try to do that. If not, use some kind of tool like a spudger and you want to hang out like this for now. So with that, um, most, of the, most of the upper body is done. We'll get back to assembling everything at the end. Now we're going to deal with the legs. So first thing we'll do is come to the back. I like releasing this tab first before I do anything else. Come on. Might need a spudger or tool. It is kind of tight. You want to bring this around 180 degrees so it's on the back. And then you want to rotate it 180 degrees. Make sure it's properly aligned. Otherwise, you might run into interference from other parts. So make sure it's completely on the back like this. From here, this little tab secures the knee in place so that um, now it has a weird, awkward outward bend, 90 degrees like so. So once you do that, go ahead and close up that tab that you opened up. Now you're going to want to rotate this entire lower leg section 180 degrees so that the shin is now on the back side, like so. You're going to want to rotate the treads up to meet into it and then close that up like that. Dealing with the toes, the first thing you would do, because I always forget, is there's this little section here, set of faux treads that folds in for robot mode. You can fold that around like that. Next up, we're gonna extend that ankle joint that we saw before. And then as I showed with the, the treads, you're gonna push up on it like this to get it in the correct orientation. I'm going to point the toes. There is a tab that goes right in here. And then the treads are supposed to lock into place as well, but I find it very difficult, at least on my copy, to actually accomplish this. Um, but they're supposed to kind of do an over-under tabbing system that's supposed to lock them into place. Again, mine doesn't really work. You can see that it doesn't fully align. Um, it does clean up a little bit better later on. Lastly, you're going to flip this flap over to, to hide that um, gap and then we have this side done. So, same thing on the other side. First thing again I like to do is come to the inside of the leg, untab this, rotate it around 180 degrees, and then rotate the treads 180 degrees. From here, we're gonna open up the small, uh, the small tab here, bend out the knee, outward, close up that tab, and then rotate the entire shin 180 degrees like so, bring the tread up and under, closing up the flap and securing it into place. With the toe, close up the tread piece, the faux tread, extend at the ankle, push up on that tread to get it like that, and then straighten this all out. There we go. And hopefully on your copy, again, it secures a little bit better with these uh, die cast tread pieces. With that, we're done. Oh, sorry, this flap. And you want to have it with his legs as straight as possible, both this way and this way for this next section here. All right. Coming back to the mid body, there's one extra set of splits that happen. You can see these two chunky tabs come down here. Use this double hinge to come up to the front, like so. And then we're gonna close up the leg. We're gonna fold the leg all the way around. There's a bunch of different tabs here. The ones you really need to focus on are this big tab, is this big tab here that goes into this gap. And then um, this tab here, which will go into the silver piece. So those are the most important ones. 
You want to fold this around like so. Make sure that's slotted in. Make sure that's slotted in. There we go. It's kind of hard to align everything, but just make sure that that is done. Uh, similarly, you want to make sure that this front section is tabbed in. Uh, come on. Hmm. There we go. Give that a bit of a squeeze. Hopefully things will line up better. So my tread on this one side uh, lined up much better now that this is all secured. Same thing on the other side, just close it up. Make sure this tab is secured in the thigh. And then the rest of it should align pretty easily. Hope this one does straighten out just a little bit better once everything is lined, li lined up like that. Once you're done, making sure that this all is aligned. Go ahead and fold this in. These two tabs will secure this into place. All right, now we're coming back to the last section here. So things to be mindful of. First of all, remember that this little flap has to go straight. It's gonna go into this recess section here. While we're here, we can go ahead and fold out this uh, gap cover or yeah. And the way you want to have this aligned is you want to have the, the, these arms making an arrow pointing towards the back. Not like downwards like this, towards the back. And this is the only other warning point that I mentioned in my live stream is that there is a tab here, and I believe it's die cast, that goes into the same slot that you use for the fists. And when you close up the tab, when they reverse, reverse around, you kind of have to just force it over that ridge. Um, but if you do that, you could damage this plastic and collapse, like basically crush this section. Um, and that will cause problems when you transform it back into robot mode. I'll show you what, it, what I'm talking about, um, but it seems to be a common problem. I've heard other people say the same thing. So just be careful with it. I don't have any good tip on how to avoid that because there's no real way to get this in other than aligning it like this and then just pushing it in. There's no like trick to it or anything like that. So coming like this, just push in. You can see it snap into place, but again, that plastic is a little bit suspect, suspect there. So you might have some issues. Make sure to push, push this down so it sits flat. And last up is you see these six pegs here and these six slots, um, but you can see that they're not perfectly parallel. These ones, because of the way it's molded, seem to want to fold in a little bit more. Uh, you really need to get these to all peg in correctly. So just bring this down. And what I like to do is use like a tool to come in here and just kind of twist it so they actually line up correctly in these ports. Give it a squeeze. And you'll know if you, you did it right if when you fold these gap covers in, that they sit almost flat or mostly flat. So again, just give that turret a squeeze up and down and that should get you pretty close to where you need to be. And then just extend the barrel and we're in Sheridan's alt mode, his tank mode, his Sheridan mode. Apparently he's based off of a Sheridan tank. Yeah, so let's do a quick 360 of them. Get him over here so you guys can see a comparison with the animation model. He looks really nice. He just has a ton of surface detail, something that I really appreciate in Masterpiece figures, not like the total lack of surface details, just blocks upon blocks. This one has tons of rivets all along here, a nice glossy paint. Uh, the silver paint here is accurate to the, uh, the show and the animation model. The treads look really phenomenal in this nice metallic um, die cast. I believe all sections of this are die cast. Under, underside, if you care about that, is also pretty clean. I mean, you do see the hips and thighs, but overall, it's, it's easy to overlook that. 
He has only a bit of small bit of playability here. He has some articulation in the turret. You can see that. And then he can rotate about this far and about this far either way as it's secured like right now. But remember, you can untab this up and lift it up just a tiny bit and then you can rotate it all the way around. And then you also get um, some articulation here with this double hinge. Lastly, the hatch on the back of the head does open up. Come on. There we go. Which is a unnecessary but nice little playability feature that they, they added in. Uh, I showed this off before, but um, it's too small. I mean, it's not the right scale for even Spike to get in. The smaller Spike. But it is still kind of a cool display piece. But that's really it for alt mode. There's not really much to talk about other than just, again, just a really nice, solid feeling and construction that you get with this mode. I'll bring out War Dog again, Bad Cube's War Dog, just so you can see just how different the size is. I wasn't able to do this on the live stream, obviously, but you can just see just how massive the difference is. It's like one and a half times the length and height and width. Uh, just FYI, the Bad Cube one does have Reaper labels on there, so the details here is not really of a, a, a fair comparison, but still you can just see how nice this looks. Uh, other comparisons that I did already, I'm going to do the same comparisons as I did before. Here he is with M uh, MP Bumblebee, the first version, which is a tiny car in real life. Uh, definitely should be uh, a little bit bigger in tank mode than this. And another staple of my re uh, comparisons, MP Streak, my favorite Datsun. It's about exactly as wide as Streak. A little bit shorter and a little bit taller. Uh, I should have brought the trailer out for for one of my uh, Prime to see if it can fit, fit if, if they can fit in. But uh, given that um, that he's smaller than a car bot, I'm sure he can fit in in terms of width. Uh, height wise, this shouldn't be no problem as well. So I'm guessing Optimus Prime should be able to transport this guy without issue. So really nice looking mode, um, really, really in, in, uh, engineered well. I think it's really clever, and after you do it a couple times, it's really fun. I don't know why they actually don't mention this flap in the instructions, the, the gap cover. Um, that wasn't mentioned at all, and I just figured it out when I transformed it a couple of times. So let's get him back into robot mode and finish off the review. We'll just go ahead and collapse the barrel. We're going to come to back here. And really reverse everything. We're going to be much quicker on the way back. Fold these in. We're going to pull up on these sections to release these uh, ports. And then on the back here, the easiest way to release this section is to pull out. Like so. Alright. Now we're going to come to the front. We're going to release this tab. and then pull outwards to release the lower legs. And again, we're gonna go back and secure these legs um, first things first, just because I want I don't want them to hang out on the knee joint. So come back, tab those in there, and let's deal with the legs one at a time. First thing we'll do is flip up this section, right here, and then pull down on the toe to rotate it down. So, you can collapse it and lock it into place. The treads, just go ahead and straighten them out if they don't do that automatically. Pull out the fake toe if you can. I have the hardest tr trouble doing that. The easiest way is to come in behind here with some kind of tool and just kind of get it started. Uh, and since it is a plastic tool, you don't have to worry about scratching your finish. Don't use like a screwdriver or anything like that. Um, I always cringe when I see people do that. <coughs> Piao. Let's see here. Now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and untab this section, like so. 
And as we did before, we're going to rotate the entire shin 180 degrees to get it facing the correct way this time. Um, yeah, this way. Come on, there we go. So now the shin's facing forward. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, sorry, I moved the knee joint. I'm trying to be very careful around the knee, as you can tell. You want to close this up. What is going on? Oh, sorry. Open this tab, close the knee up. And lock the knee into place with that tab. There we go. And now we just deal with this section. This section, remember to get it out onto the back of the calf and then rotate 180 degrees. Then you just rotate that in. See the QC sticker back here and then fold this panel flat into the inside of the leg. And then we have one leg done. Same thing on the other side, we'll go a little bit quicker. Flap up, ankle released, collapsed, push this down. Release this tab here, sets the tabs. Bring the leg down by opening up this tab, closing it. Oh, sorry, and rotating this 90 degrees, then closing it, closing up the tab. Rotate the tread. Uh, the treads only rotate uh, a specific direction. So one way is counterclockwise, and this, this way is um, clockwise on this way. Uh, transforming back into robot mode is the opposite uh, the opposite transformation. All right, the legs are done. No need to worry about potentially breaking anything there. Let's come up here, fold in these two flaps, one and two. So it forms kind of like a triangle here. Open up this section and we're gonna do that um, weird transformation, right? So we're gonna transform this 90 or rotate this 90 degrees both ways. Both, both sections, rotate this through. Once that's through, we can deal with the rest by lifting this up, getting it around, and this folds into the turret, like so. Like that, this will come down. I'll leave it untabbed for now, it makes it a little bit easier to finish off the, the torso section. Speaking of which, I'm gonna bring these up and out like so. Bring the head up, rotate on that platform, not just the neck joint. Back here, fold this flap down, open this door, get this up all the way like so, and the head's gonna pop up like he's putting on a sweater. This section here, be mindful, you don't want it to be angled towards the back. You want to push these in. Oh, come on. You want to push these in. And down. So you're going to want to pull these um, side sections down. And they're going to come around here. And you'll see, oh, sorry, I should have extended the shoulders first. Let's extend the shoulders, bring this around like so. Free up that hole. Same thing on this side. Extend the shoulders. Rotate on this piece all the way around. And as I said before, you're going to bring this around like so. This is going to come down. like that. There is a section that tabs underneath here. You're gonna bring these side sections in, push them in so that the pegs securely secure downward like that. Same thing on this side. Bring that in and then down. There we go. 
There we go, like so. Give it a little squeeze here. Some people seem to transform it back and have a little bit of gap. You just need to give it a little bit of a squeeze. Push downward to secure all of this upper section down. And again, making sure this, this angled makes an arrow kind of pointing forward. We can go ahead and close up this port, tab in the backpack, and then we just have to deal with the arms. And as before, very simple, we just need to extend them. Push this down like that. Open up the flap on the forearm. And let's see if I damaged my, uh, my section here. So, yeah, so here, let me show you. Zooming in. You can see now it's not like a perfect rectangle. You can see there's some deformation here. Uh, and that's because of the way the transformation um, when we had to push that rear section in. So this probably won't close all the way unless I kind of like force it in now. There we go. Not a, not a huge deal, but um, kind of an odd choice. Probably something that they kind of overlooked or they thought that the plastic could handle it. But it's not a huge deal. You just just be careful with it, and you should be fine. All right. So now we're finally back in robot mode, ready to finish off the review. So my th final thoughts on this guy are that he's one of my more favorite um, fan toys figures releases as of late. Um, there are some that I think have been really hit or miss. A lot of the movie cast uh, I don't like. I don't think I like any of the movie cast that they've. Uh, put out but recently i really like their road king i really like their spoiler i really like their jabber i really like the sheridan he's really fun to transform as long as you're careful um and he just looks really nice very clean no open gaps anywhere the only complaints i have are um with the knee being careful with that the weird kind of quirky shoulders that are uh, just kind of weird to pose they make him look a little bit awkward sometimes depending on your position and um the weirdness with the the tabs here that are kind of deformed when you transform him i think those are all kind of minor things for my read is that a lot of fan toys folks are really looking for really good uh robot and alt modes specifically robots and the nice quality feel so um if you don't transform your figures a lot i think you'll be missing out because the cool engineering but you'll also be saving yourself some um, potential headaches with potential damage to the knee and hand stuff. But I really enjoyed it. I think that it was really thoughtful. Love this take. He's definitely going to be my Warpath. I can't really see replacing him anytime soon. Um, but I th hopefully you guys thought uh, the same just going through this review. He's really enjoyable. I really enjoyed him. Very highly recommend him. And uh, yeah, that's really it. So if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them in the comment section below. This guy is shipping. This is a retail copy that Toy Dojo uh, provided to me, or I bought from Toy Dojo. So if you want to pick one up from them, uh, go ahead and click on the link in the description be below, and you can get that shipped out to you right away. Um, as always, if you found this useful, the transformation review, and found it enjoyable, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Um, hopefully you guys are all keeping safe, warm, and healthy. Uh, stay, stay inside. We'll come back with some more reviews. I promise over the next couple of weeks to months as we're stuck inside. All right. That's all for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.